Ooh. Right. Is it record it straight into Dropbox or something? Uh, it, was, well, it's, it says it's recording the cloud. I think it's recording on Zoom. Okay, cool. I can see the record button now. Hi. Hi, Annie. Hi, I'm Annie. <laughs> this is Matt. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I'm just going to be chatting to Matt about uh, Consul, the open source digital tool for participatory budgeting. Um, so I'm just going to go through the tool and Matt's going to ask me some questions and grill me on what I know about the tool. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, should, should I just start? Yeah, cool. Cool. So this is the main site for Consul. Um, you can see here on the map, there's so many countries using the tool. Um, and the features of it are debates, proposals, participatory budgeting, voting, and collaborative legislation. So this site is actually quite useful if you want to know how you actually do it. Um, this is a kind of general little video guides here. If you come onto this site, it's quite useful. I'm just going to click on to Madrid and show you what theirs looks like. So these are all the organisations using Consul at the moment. So you can see this is all in Spanish. Um, so these are the proposals that are the most active at the moment here. I don't understand this actually. So we won't go too much into this, but you can see here the debates. So they've had five votes for this one, and this is the most active at the moment. I'm actually going to go into the UK demo version of the one that I've got, because um, you'll be able to understand it in English. And then we can see how to actually create a debate and things like that. So. This is my console demo. Um, so here you've got debates. You can start a debate here. So for example, um, you can order them by like the most active, highest rated. So if I click on that, like the ones with the most votes will come up at the top of the page. But you can also tag your debates so say for example you want to do something to do with the environment you can tag it environment so if I click on that other things will come up so it's not just debates it could be collaborative legislation or PB initiatives around the theme of environment and that will all pop up here so obviously I've not got any votes at the moment on this these are all just um, uh, debates at the moment in fact, yeah, you can also, so citizens can actually comment on like ideas as well. So here you go. I would like to know if the closure of the city center to private traffic would have a major impact on pollution or not so relevant. And uh, you can add in links. So if you wanted to put in statistics, you can reply. Uh, people can also vote on comments. So if someone is writing a comment and it's really not relevant or it's inappropriate uh, it will just go down so that it's not seen um, I will kind of I'll come back to that later and I'll show you how you can um, moderate citizens so to kind of control swear words and inappropriate behavior and things like that you can do that in the back office as well um, but it doesn't happen uh, usually so that's the debate side of things so usually what happens is if you have a debate um, and you have a sort of end date on the debate um, and say for example you need a thousand votes on the debate before it goes through to being a proposal or a vote so people can also upload proposals here here's the example so you need a thousand supports um, for it to be passed through to a voting phase and you can see this has only got six Again, you can see the categories at the bottom. So you've got all the categories here that are, at, are live and active. Um, so if I click on this, you 
the right to play from our child friendly city. Um, you can see they've put in um, some animation here and a video and a bit of text as well explaining what their proposal is about. You can also add in like PDF or Word documents um, so for more information. And again, this one's already got comments on it. This part is a little bit weird. So the community, you can, if you're a citizen and you think, oh, that proposal is right up my street, um, I'd really like to help with that proposal, or I really want to know what's going to happen next with that, you can join a community. So the community on this proposal, um, and usually what will come up here is a lot of the comments, or if you might have a meetup or something, or um, it might be that you can help sort of generate ideas around that proposal to make it better so that it get, keeps getting bumped up. Um, again, you can, I'm just going to go back onto this. You can also share as well to sort of boost the community on this proposal. Have you got any questions so far? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, I'm just going to go straight into voting then. So voting doesn't necessarily have to be just on like a small scale proposal. It could be actually that the council or the community running something already, they want to put up like two ideas, um, you know, refurbishment of the North Square. So which model do you like the best? It could be like uh, you've got a play park and you've got two uh, designs for that play park and you, you want people to decide in that town or in that area what they think and what they want. So you can participate in polls. Um, there aren't any like live votes at the moment, apart from this one. So uh, you can actually put in like a few questions. It doesn't have to be one or two. I think you could put in a few. So do you consider it necessary to remodel the square? And you can hit yes or no. Uh, which of the two finals projects do you prefer to be carried out? This one or this one? Uh, and then you can obviously have two different designs for what it could look like. Again, you can add in videos and documents, comments as well. So people here are debating a little bit. Um, I love this one, but this one's more expensive. Um, And this is quite similar to collaborative legislation. So although it's like a poll, it's a vote on what something might look like or um, voting on a proposal, like which one do you like the best? Collaborative legislation is a little bit similar in that um, the council or a community can upload sort of policies and um, people can comment and make the policy better. So for example, we've got reforestation of the North Park. Um, so the city council are talking about um, a reforestation project. Um, and they obviously are trying to give citizens a little bit more information about that. You've got a debate on it. Um, what needs or problems do you consider the park has today? So it's a space for people to like talk about, um, you know, the benefits but also negatives of doing a new project or doing something new in your area. Um, in what areas do you think reforestation is needed? So you can click on these and you can get involved in the debates around that. But again, in collaborative legislation, there's other things. So for example, you've got air quality and climate change plan. So here you've got a massive description. And here are the documents. So you can go into these documents and go, okay, um, I think this could be done better or, and you can uh, participate in debates. There is the other option to add comments and you can have sort of open documents like live documents where people can type in as well. Um, there's just not an example of that up here.
here we go. So like draft publication. So it's still in draft phase. Um, shall I move on to PB? Uh, yeah, okay. That's still in Spanish. Ejemplo. <laughs> anyway, so this is the purchase budget budgeting part of it. So here you've got a kind of linear timeline of what happens. And in the back office, um, the citizens, sorry, not the citizens, the council or the community in charge of the process can change this. So it might just say, for example, um, projects open to public, whatever. It can say something completely different. Um, accepting projects, reviewing projects, selecting, evaluating, publishing projects, um, voting, reviewing, and then finished budget, and then you could have something else like, um, I don't know, announcement event or something like that. So this in here, there isn't an example yet of PB. So I'm gonna go back into Madrid and show you this one. So here they've got, so this is district, and this is the entire city. So here they've kind of split up money for the entire city, um, and then like smaller districts within the city. So they've um, done it so each area is allocated a certain amount of money depending on their needs and what kind of what kind of themes that they're going for. So if I click on one of these, you can see the whole city is covered in wee dots where there's processes going on. But if I click on this one, for example, oh, my internet connection is unstable. <laughs> you can see that this area has got this amount to spend. And these are the proposals and the amount of votes that will get put on them. So it means that um, citizens, they don't have to, they could vote in the city budget, but they can also vote in their own um, individual budgets as well. So say for example, I'm from this town here, um, I could vote in the city one, but I could also vote in my own smaller area. It really depends on how the council or the community have decided to set up their process. So it might not it might not be a complete city vote, it could just be a small town vote, it could be neighbourhood. Um, it's really dependent on the process. But again you can have it so that it's allocating specific amounts of money or you can take away the money completely. So it's not, it's not about the money, but it's more about the projects or it's about specific themes under like poverty or environment or regeneration or, you know, youth projects. It could be anything. So you can choose how this works, whether it's districts, whether it's themes, whether you've got money. Um, there's so many ways of doing it. So the last thing I'm going to show you is if I can get in to the back office, I'm gonna show you how the admin will work. If I can get into it. Oh no, why is it being funny? Here we go. So this is the administration part of it. So if I was working in a council or a community and I was wanting to run a process, uh, you would have access to this part of the site. Um, citizens don't have access to this. So it's usually just people in charge of the projects or in charge of the voting system as a whole. Um, so here you can see different options. If you're wanting to create a poll, this is like here, as I showed you earlier, refurbishment of the North Square. You can edit that. You can change the language. You can add information here. You can add images. I could create another poll. Um, 
so yeah, you've kind of got all the different sections here, proposals, if I was wanting to upload proposals, um, or if I was wanting to monitor proposals, you would click on them. You can manage the progress of it. So I forgot to talk about this as well, but in the proposal section, you can create a new milestone. So milestones are good because it kind of shows you how far a project has come. So say for example, um, I had a project that was a youth project that I wanted to run over the course of a year. Um, you could upload pictures or like a description of how far your project has come. So I've managed to get 20 more young people involved in cooking classes and healthy cooking. It could be anything, but this is where you can upload uh, key dates and images and documents. So that's you as the counsellor, is it, that does that? No. So this would be whoever's come up with the project. So the milestones would be the person who's running the project, running the proposal. Um, however, I know there are different types of processes. So councils might decide to upload all of the projects themselves um, and then talk with the community and say, oh, look, what, like, let me upload it and stuff. But it's better that the community or the person running the proposal can upload it themselves. I'll show you how to do that in a wee minute because it's a good question. But yeah, it's good for like putting in key dates or key information that's happened. So again, you've got collaborative legislation part. Um, this is usually more for councils um, or someone who might want to add in a policy and see how much support they can get on it. Um, so you can open these up and you can edit it. So you can edit the dates. You can edit the debate phase. So say, for example, you only want the debate phase to be open for a week. You can do that. If you want a proposal phase, so you have a new policy agreement um, around education and you want people to upload new ideas around education, you can have that as well. Um, again, turn off these. So if you don't want people putting comments on, you can not click that button. So I'm gonna go into PBE now. Again, there isn't any projects, but you can see here there are two budgets. So you can click in this and manage your projects. So these are all citywide, but again, it could be that it's just by neighborhood or by a smaller area. You can see the amount that the budget is worth. So if I click into this, it'll take you to the actual project. Again, you can add milestones on this, but you can edit all of this. So um, if you've made a mistake or you want to add in more documents or more images or another tag, you can put it in here as a um, administrator. So this bit is good for if you have both online and offline voting. So you can actually um, tell people where the uh, paper ballots will be, so the booths, you can upload that so it comes up on the page. Booth assignments is just um, who's going to be managing that booth at the time. So you can even put, you can assign people, you're going to be managing that booth on this day. So people can actually see who's, who's there. Um, message to users is just a way of contacting people. So um, I'll go over registration and user ver verification in a little bit, but this is a way that you can send notifications out to people. So oh, you've got a new vote coming up, um, just like reminders and things like that. Again, if you need to email someone specifically, um, 
someone might have not completed their proposal fully or they might need to add in a little bit more information or someone's commenting and they shouldn't be and um, you can email specific people as well site content is where the sort of design of the page so you can see in the front of the admin in the front of the page it's very basic it's just got a little like banner that says console on it you could change that to say i don't know scotland or whatever your city is um, you can change the text in here as well so banners cannot be found i have no idea why it's saying that mm -hmm. anyway so that's just the sort of design and text and things like that. Moderated content. So this is where you can actually hide proposals that aren't, that haven't been accepted yet. So citizens will have the opportunity if there's a, a proposal space open, um, it'll be like between this date and this date. Um, people will upload proposals online, but you can set it so that it's hidden until accepted, if that makes sense. So evaluators can have a look through it. Um, and confirm it. There are none at the moment, but it would come up in here. So confirmed, pending. Can you also have that turned off? Yeah. Uh -huh. So you can have it so that it's automatically people can up proposals and it goes through smoothly. Or it depends on the level of like how how much control you want over your citizens. So. Um, and yeah, again, like if you've got a process and you, you don't want more proposals being uploaded, you can turn that off so that it's hidden or it's, it's switched off completely. Um, yeah, profiles. So I was going to talk a little bit about this, but um, in the site, there's different like roles. So the administrator is the kind of main um, person who will like go in and do all the sort of you know typing and moderating etc and um, officials could be like someone who's an elected member or someone who's a member of the council a moderator is someone who will help and um, moderate the proposals that are coming in so you can actually add in an email um evaluator that's the same thing they're evaluating proposals evaluator though you could specify so it could be like someone who's from a charity um I, I don't know an educational charity so they they would be the best person to review all the educational projects or it could be someone from the environment so they're the best person to actually instead of it being someone from the community or council that maybe doesn't know too much about it so it's so they're getting experts to actually evaluate these proposals um, and also these people can give advice. So say they get a proposal in, it's maybe not quite like ready to go up. They can email that person and go, oh, it'd be really good if you could just add in this little bit or whatever. So, so do they have some powers then, aside from just being labeled on the site? Yeah, they do because they're still um, evaluating proposals that are going up. So unless these people, these people are kind of given rights to evaluate these projects um, and then they can accept whether that proposal will go up or not. Okay. So and it's kind of up to the people who are running the process whether they want to give someone that right to look through the proposal. What, what's an official, what are they able to do? These guys are, officials are like, it could be an elected member. Yeah. It could be someone. I think that's right. So what, what, what can they do? What's their kind of power on the site? I'm not sure. Okay. That's a good question because I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, managers as well. I'm not entirely sure. I think because you've got this at the bottom management. Um, I'll just click on it. Mm. not sure I think a manager is more like 
a user. I don't know how to look at that. Quite a lot of different roles, isn't there? There are quite a lot of roles. That's the thing that they don't all get used. Like the yeah, yeah. is the more important one. But I also think the evaluators and the moderators, because the moderators are obviously checking um, for inappropriate behaviour, but the evaluators are really important. If you're wanting someone external that's not internal, that's that can have a sort of overall, okay, that's a good idea. But um, so yeah, it's good to have a various groups of people, especially if you've got hundreds and hundreds of ideas coming in. One person can't sit and go through hundreds and hundreds of ideas. So it's good to have a team that um, can help you do that. So these guys, um, you can kind of tag them to specific proposals. So if I wanted to upload a proposal as a citizen on environment, I would tag it environment and that would go straight away to this person because they've, it's tagged, if you know what I mean. Um, statistics. So this is where you can kind of get, oh, I've just zoomed in. This is where you can kind of get more information if you're looking for sort of data. Um, you can find out who's been visiting your site, who's been voting on proposals, who's verified user, unverified, um, and it's got kind of graphs and things like that here to show you when and where. So this is quite useful if you're wanting to collect a bit of data. Obviously, this is just a demo site, so it's very bland at the moment. Settings. Now, this is quite an important one. So if you click on global settings, this is what I was chatting about, the official roles. It could be like a mayor, an elected member, a councillor. Um, and you can set them levels. So level one. I'm not entirely sure like the relevance of that for like PB though, but it's just another thing that you can add in if you wish. Um, so how you can kind of set whether the votes are anonymous or not anonymous. Like if the votes are coming up on the site or not, that's this. So maximum ratio of anonymous votes. You can change that. Um, number of votes from which a debate can no longer be edited. So uh, the user who's put in a debate question, they can still edit it up until that amount has been voted on. What's, what's the ratio of anonymous votes? So does that mean only a certain number can be anonymous in a certain proportion? Yeah, so I think it means, um, so up until 50 votes, there won't be, um, like there won't be votes, it won't be visible, the amount of votes, or it won't be visible who's voted, if that makes sense, on the debate. So, does that make sense? <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, so, so what is it, it's the... Maximum yeah. ratio of anonymous votes per debate. So it's like the amount of votes that aren't, the amount of votes that are anonymous, that are, are, are not visible. Okay. This is something we should, we should look into though. So like <laughs> yeah, maybe, if I change yeah. it on the debate, like if I change that to 100 and then I'll just look on the site and see what's changed. So it's quite good to play about with before you even do anything because some of it, like maybe the language around that is a little bit confusing. Yes, yeah, it's a bit ambiguous, isn't it? Yeah. So anonymous votes are by registered users with an unverified account. So that means um, their account has not been verified by the, the administrator. So you can have unverified accounts where they've not, they've registered, but they haven't gone through the email. So they haven't clicked to verify their account. Okay. Like step verification process. Yeah. So I think this means they've, they've tried to vote but it's not been accepted yet. Yeah, okay. I'll explain yeah. the kind of verification bit because I think that's what that means. Cool. Um, but yeah, the language can be a little bit confusing. Yeah, I'm still not quite clear what it means by ratio <laughs> as well, but that's, that might just be me. Let's, let's leave that. <laughs> um, 
yeah anyway so yeah you can change all the the amount of votes and the amount of like you know you can have this amount of comments and blah 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 so that's where you would do all that here Like if you've got a sort of community or council Twitter handle, you could add that in as well. Or like, say for example, you've got a PB process and it's like, uh, you decide, you could put that in, like hashtags and things like that, which is quite useful. Yeah, so there's so many options down here. I'm just scrolling through them. Um, so that's that. Proposals, topics. Oops, gone off it. Yeah, so you know how I was talking about how you can kind of have different topics for different ideas. You can put them in here so that it's easier to uh, look for it if you're looking for something specific. Um, Geozones is like the area like, so this can be a little bit complicated. So East District, North District. So it could be down to your neighborhood, like your geo zone. Um, and you can put in coordinates for that so that it's actually like the actual specific area. Um, this is just another thing to put in images. And I think that's it. But again, you've got all these other things. So like moderation, you can click, like the moderators will go into debates. Um, there might be like things that have come up that have been flagged so that they can moderate. Um, but there's none. So. so you can see in here like comments marked as viewed. So can, can users flag stuff then? Yes. Uh-huh. Um, I'll see if I can go back into the back into the office, the main account, go back to console. So I'm signed in as a admin, so it might be a little bit different. Mm. Yeah, so you can you can flag it, but you can also like downvote it because it's inappropriate. So a lot of the time you don't really need that much moderation because the citizens will do it for you. Um, and chatting to um, Miguel from Madrid, he said that it's usually a site for like positive change. So people aren't there to like, you know, like Facebook um, keyboard gangsters where they're just sort of writing crap it usually doesn't happen so what i was going to show you though is how to do the two-step registration because i'll just explain that a little bit um so If you want to sign up, you just type in a username. It could be anything, um, your email, password, confirm password, and then you just uh, accept the terms and conditions. So what will happen is you'll get a notification in your email and you'll just click that link and that has you been like verified, which means that you can vote on projects um, and your votes will be counted. So without the two-step verification process, your votes won't be counted. Is there any way they can edit that to kind of put like a postcode or anything like that? Or yeah, so in the back office, which I haven't showed you, I would have to look for it. But in the back office, um, you can put up like email. It could be postcode. It could be date of birth. But obviously, the more you ask to for people to fill in, then the more people are going to have to sit and type and the less engaging it is. Um, so yeah, I think ones are email and postcode. And username can be anything. It doesn't need to be your name. So you can be an anonymous person, but still have a 
a valid email. Um, again, um, not everyone has an email address, so it depends on how the process, want, like how you want to work the process. Because obviously, if you're wanting to include young people, um, not all of them will have an email address. So there's lots to think about. But yeah, have you got any other questions? Um, yeah, potentially. Um, that was really good. Thanks. That was yeah, that's a really nice little bit of it all. I think the bit I was probably um, I'd like to know a bit more on is the PV bit, probably. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what what users can kind of do in the PV bit. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to sign in again. If I can. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, so as a user, unless you have um, done your two-step verification process, it might not be by email, it could be SMS, like message as well. Okay. It could be that you've clicked on something to get back into the site, which means you've kind of, your registration is like accepted. Um, so this is not a good example because there's nothing here, but I'll go into the Spanish version. So citizens could, the thing with PB is that it's usually the proposals where their most talking happens, the debates and the proposals, um, because when it gets to the PB part, you've got all these projects and you can click on the projects and you can still comment on them, um, but they're now in that phase. So you can, you can see where the project is as well if you choose to add a map. Um, but the only really thing you can do is comment and vote. So, so, so is, there, is there kind of a switch then? So initially you can put your ideas and comment and then it switches to just being able to vote, but you can still comment. Is that right? Yeah. So it depends, again, in the back office, you can switch on. So you've got your proposal phase. Your proposal phase could last like two weeks. You've got this, these two weeks to upload your ideas. Then that phase, the proposal, the chosen proposals, say you've got 80 proposals in there um, and only 20 will go through to a vote, then that could go through to PB um, and it could be divided into areas, it could be divided into themes or budget, like it could be a small budget, small pot or a big pot, it really depends on the process that you're trying to do. Um, and then it will go into there, but because it's already been a proposal in here and it's been like, you know, um, it's had support and stuff, it'll go through here. And then you could have like two weeks to open up the vote to people. So, um, yeah, that's how it works on this site. But again, if you're wanting to turn off like, you don't have to have debates, proposals, um, voting or uh, collaborative legislation. You can turn all these functions off okay. and you just have PB. So it could just be that uh, the council has already accepted all their, their projects and then they've already got them through like a email or whatever and then they've them up themselves. So they've put the projects up here for the vote. Um, and they just maybe explain a little bit in the text somewhere on PB about how they've accepted proposals. Um, so, sorry. <laughs> Someone wants to meet me, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna die. Ah, okay, cool. Sick. I'll be back. Cool. I'm just trying to see if I can find an English version. Um, 
there's a couple of examples in Scotland, uh, like Western Bartonshire and Glasgow. Um, they've just done PB, like just the participatory budgeting part of it. Oh, here's New York. So they've split it up like that. They've got here, so it's really um, open and transparent. List of projects, list of unfeasible projects. So it could be that you've put up a project online um, the the council or the moderator has said, sorry, it doesn't fit the the criteria. Um, but here's some tips for next time. Um, thanks or whatever like that, and you you can still have them up online, um, which explains the reasons why it's unfeasible. So it's very transparent. No one's getting like left out. It's it's still up online. Um, list of projects not selected for balloting. List of all ideas. Um, so yeah, and then you can have a list of obviously the ones that have gone through. So yeah, it's quite good for transparency. If you do have projects that are up and they're not being, they've not gone through, then it's good to be like, well, this is why they haven't, but thanks for all the amazing ideas and, um, you know, return for next year, or they could still have them up online, keep it open so that people can edit the ideas until they're better for next year. Um, so it's just like that ongoing process of that is, you know, getting people to help share ideas and make them better. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, that's, no, that's great. Um, I think that's probably most of the questions I had about it. Um, I suppose there's things like kind of whether there's any automatic moderation. Is that a Yes, that's a good question. I would need to go into that for a bit. I think what you can do is, from the top of my mind, because I know that the back office can be a little confusing, and that's something that we're working on, is trying to make it a little bit more coherent and easy to understand for anyone going into the back office. But you can moderate, like you can input language. So you can input swear words so that it, like, if that flag comes up, it will automatically get flagged so, or it will automatically not go up, if that makes sense. So there are ways to moderate. Um, it could be that you have to have a, like you've put up a proposal and it's worth, I don't know, 10,000 pounds. Your, your criteria is it can only be 5,000 pounds. It will automatically like not go through. So there are ways to make it, make it more automatic and easier uh, for people moderating but cool um yeah and in, uh, basically the only other thing is in terms of showing what's happened to something presumably they can put their information up on the site or people can use milestones themselves to show where things have got to is that right yeah absolutely so if you've uploaded a project um i'll just see if i can show you on this you are the you are the author of that project. I'm trying to think because I've put up one recently and I don't know where I put it. Um, yeah, so it'll come up like uh, author here. So you're the author of that, and it means you can you you can click on it basically, and you can edit it. Um, let me just I can't remember. Anyway, so if I put up a debate, it'll come up here author, and you can click on it and edit it. It's really easy. Um, again, if you're wanting to put milestones in, it'll come up here on proposals and you can just upload like images or video or dates and things like that. Cool. Um, yeah, I think that's probably most of most of our questions. That's great. Cool. I hope that's been helpful. Yeah. There's still things that I don't know. It's like there's a lot that we're still trying to work out. Um, I know the back office isn't the most user friendly. Obviously, I'm just using a demo, so the demo is a wee bit incremental. But um, yeah, some of the language we could probably change to make it easier for people to use, especially like administrators. Yeah. I suppose I've got, I've got a few bits of kind of feedback, I suppose, for the thing in general. 
um, is it worth doing that now or should we should we finish the recording and then I don't know what's what's best yeah let's stop recording and then okay it's not, it's not damning like I'm not <laughs> uh, forever second judged forever online <laughs> okay well I'll just I'll just stop this that's great uh